In order to guarantee full understanding of this course, you should have completed previous universal molding modules. MU1 Introduction MU2 Fundamentals MU3 Molding with Graphs MU4 Material Morphology MU5 Press Calculations MU6 Injection Unit Calculations MU7 Cooling Calculations MU8 Rheology MU9 Injection Speed MU10 Fill Balance Remember that your objective should be to identify the requirements of your process and attend those needs with well thought out solutions. Universal molding is a discipline that promotes a structure of organized events. Data generation. First, compile information, organize a database, and make this information accessible to everyone in your molding facility. Include machine data, mold data, material data. All these are used for initial calculations. Mold from the desk, making initial calculations for drying, press, injection unit, cooling, etc. Finally, the Universal Laboratory. Determine optimum molding parameters using universal molding procedures. Once again, remember that before performing a universal molding laboratory, you have to do molding from the desk. All auxiliary equipment should be properly installed and correctly operating. Temperatures, water temperature, injection barrel temperature profile and its corresponding melt temperatures, heat zones if the mold has hot runners, etc., should already be reached. Barrel adjustments, recovery and transfer positions, decompression, recovery speed, etc., should have been programmed. The proper nozzle tip should have been installed. The required closing force should have been set. The platen openings, their movement, speeds, and mold protection should have been carefully and precisely adjusted. Extended cooling time should have been set. Remember that cooling time is set higher than required in order not to interfere in the determination of the other previously adjusted parameters. Cooling time will be optimized at the end. The ideal injection speed should have been determined, adjusted, and should be filling over 95% of the required fill for the mold. The injection pressure limit should have been determined and adjusted. The pack stage should stay off. Important. The equipment should only be operated and or adjusted by qualified personnel who have read the operational manuals of the equipment and have mastered the equipment's functionality. In this course, we will discuss review. Transfer position, pack, gate freeze and cushion. Determining pack pressure. Determining hold time. Summary of parameters. Review. Transfer position, pack, gate freeze and cushion. Transfer position. The transfer position is what determines the end of the injection stage. Once the injection unit is filled close to 95%, the injection stage ends and the next stage, pack, sometimes known as hold, begins. Pack. In this stage, the screw continues acting as a piston, compressing additional melt into the cavities until filling the remainder that was not filled in the injection stage. The pack stage is known as the pressure control stage. During this stage, we control pressure in order to achieve the proper weight of the molded parts, which universal molders call mass dimensions. Remember that mass dimensions are only a function of the quantity of material and should not be confused with dimensions that are the effect of shrinkage. Manipulating the pack pressure guarantees dimensions that are a function of the material quantity. The machine pack parameter is hydraulic pack pressure, and the universal pack parameter is plastic pack pressure. Gate freeze. Once the cavities are packed, the melt is held in place until the melt in the gate solidifies, creating a plug that holds the melt inside the cavities. The parameter that controls gate freeze is hold time, and its units are in seconds. Why do some machine controls divide pack into two, pack and hold? Those controls separate the pressure control stage and the gate freeze. In addition to pressure and time, they take pack speed into consideration. Why doesn't universal molding take hold into consideration? We do consider it. We just don't separate pack and hold. We believe that this stage has only one time, which starts at the end of injection and finishes when the gates freeze. Why doesn't universal molding consider pack speed? For universal molders, 
pack is the stage that controls pressure and speed is a result, since it is impossible to simultaneously control both pressure and melt speed. What can we do with machines that provide both pack and hold? If possible, turn one off. Otherwise, adjust the time of the secondary stage to zero. Should I use multiple pack pressures? We recommend only one pressure. There are some old molds that require a second pressure. For example, a first pack pressure to guarantee mass dimensions and a second pressure to guarantee that the runner will demold. Normally, the runner is the last part that solidifies in the mold. Even though we don't mold runners, it is possible that they require packing in order to guarantee demolding. Cushion. The cushion is the small amount of plastic that always remains in front of the screw after the pack stage. Can the cushion equal zero? It could, but that would make the pack stage useless and consequently would mean that you would not have control over the mass dimensions. The cushion should always exist. Determining pack pressure. Pack pressure is determined by increasing hydraulic pack pressure or melt pressure until the cavities are completely full or at the desired weight. 1. Before beginning this part of the laboratory, you must adjust the hold time to a value that is more than required. For example, consider half of the extended cooling time that was utilized in previous laboratories. Why such an exaggerated time? In this part of the experiment, we must guarantee gate freeze. Later, we will optimize the hold time. 2. Enter cooling time equal to the difference between the extended cooling time and the hold time. Notice that the sum of the hold time and the cooling time should equal the extended cooling time. For example, in a laboratory in which the extended cooling time is equal to 12 seconds, a decision was made to use half of the extended cooling time in order to guarantee gate freeze. Results. Hold time equals 6 seconds and cooling time equals 6 seconds. Important. Always guarantee that the cooling time is greater than the recovery time. Why guarantee a cooling time that is greater than that of the recovery time? And how will that affect the laboratory? It was explained in previous courses that, when the cooling time ends, permission to open the mold is only allowed if recovery has finished. In other words, the mold will stay closed until recovery has ended, no matter whether or not the cooling time has finished. Consequently, cooling time will be extended, and depending on the molding machine, it's possible that you won't know that it has. 3. Make a study of part weights at distinct pack pressures. Begin this experiment with a pressure that is less than required. For example, start with 10% of the injection pressure obtained at the moment of transfer. Then increment the pressure until you achieve parts that are completely full or at the desired weight. Take two or three samples per pressure and find the average weight for each pressure. Tabulate the data and graph the weight of the parts versus pack pressure. Remember to weigh the molded parts without the runner. The graph shows that the pressure stopped contributing to the weight of the parts after 1,000 psi of pack pressure. 4. Select a pressure at which the weight is relatively constant. In this example, a minimum hydraulic pack pressure of 1,050 psi machine parameter was selected. The norm would be to select a pressure range for example, from 1,050 to 1,150 PSI. 5. Once a pack pressure range is selected, convert it to universal mold parameters. In this example, the injection unit utilized had an intensification ratio of 12.2, and its corresponding universal parameters are obtained by universal pack pressure equals hydraulic pressure times intensification ratio. Then find the minimum, maximum, and average hydraulic pack pressures and convert them to universal parameters. Notes. Although the objective is dimensions and not weight, at this time we must work with the cavity weight. After demolding the parts, you will have to multiply dimension changes due to shrinkage. Remember to weigh the parts without the runner. In each experiment, verify that the final pack position does not equal zero. Avoid opening the mold or forcing melt into undesired spaces as a consequence of excessive pressure. An easy way to discover if the pressure is excessive is by looking at the graph of pack pressure versus part weight. In the graph, a new tendency begins at more than 1200 psi. 
indicating that the molt has opened or that flash has been created. What happens if the cushion reaches zero? Assuming that there is no defect in the injection unit, such as a leaky check ring, increase the recovery's position and its volume. Increase it until the final position after pack is greater than zero. Always guarantee that the cooling time is greater than the recovery time. Determining hold time. The hold time is determined by the gate freeze test. While the gate is liquid, the pack pressure keeps the melt in the cavity. Once the gate has solidified, the melt cannot escape even if the pack pressure is eliminated. 1. Adjust to the determined pack pressure. 2. Without changing the pack pressure that was found, reduce the hold time until the weight of the parts begins to decrease due to soft gates, which cannot keep the compressed melt in the cavities. In order to maintain a totally constant cycle, the sum of the cooling time and the hold time must remain constant. For each interval of time that is subtracted from the hold time, you must add the same amount to the cooling time. Three. Tabulate the times with their corresponding total part weights that were obtained and create a graph of part weight versus hold time. Though the cooling time column is not graphed, include it. It will help when entering the experiment times. Notes. For each hold time setting, take two or three samples and average the weight of the parts. Remember to weigh the parts without the runner. Always guarantee that the cooling time is greater than the recovery time. 4. In the graph, find the time at which the weight of the parts starts to decrease. You can clearly see that it will require hold times of more than 4.5 seconds to guarantee gate freeze. In this example, the selected hold time range is between 4.75 and 5 seconds. Summary of parameters. Once the determination of pack parameters has been completed, we summarize them. Determined hold time and its operational range. Determined pack pressure, universal and machine, and its operational range. Leftover extended cooling time. Recovery volume and position. Cushion, or final position of the screw after pack, and its operational range. Finally, verify that the machine controls have been programmed with the determined pack parameters. This will also work in molds with hot runners? Correct. Even with a hot runner, you have to guarantee gate freeze. And in molds that have hot runners and valve gates? The concept is the same. However, you should guarantee that the closing of the valves occurs when the programmed hold time has been reached. Mechanical characteristics of the materials that should be considered during pack. Amorphous materials. Problems with overpacking due to low shrinkage. Problems with flash. Breakage during demolding. The transition from pasty melt to solid is gradual. Semicrystallines. Problems with incomplete packing due to high shrinkage. Sunken areas and holes. Easy to demold. The transition from liquid melt to solid is quick. During the pack stage, we guarantee measurements that are a function of mass. Do not try to correct thermal dimensions in the pack laboratory. Exercise 1. In two experiments with the same mold, the first injected and packed with an amorphous material, polystyrene, and the second with a semicrystalline material, nylon, would the hold time be greater with the amorphous material or the semicrystalline? The graph demonstrates that the amorphous material took more hold time, 6.5 seconds. With the semicrystalline material, hold time was reduced to 1 second and gate freeze was not observed. It is presumed that the transition in the gates from melt to solid is sudden with semicrystallines and gradual with amorphous material. Exercise 2. In two experiments with the same mold, the first injected and packed with an amorphous material, polystyrene, and the second with a semicrystalline material, nylon, would the pack pressure be greater with the amorphous material or the semicrystalline? The graph shows that the amorphous material required more pack pressure, over 155 psi in order for the part weight to stop increasing. With the semicrystalline material, a little over 50 psi was needed in order to stop the weight from increasing. We presume that the pack of a semicrystalline liquid melt requires less force to pack than the force needed to pack a pasty amorphous melt. Let's review.
You have completed this lesson.